We are listening to Lover of My Soul by Jonathan McReynolds. And when you came in, we were listening to Gracefully Broken by Tasha Cobb. Those are some songs that really resonated in my heart this evening. Um, wanted to share that with you as we prepare to conclude this chapter three in Healing the Soul of a Woman. God wants the wounded, but before we actually delve in, let's just go ahead and just welcome everyone. Welcome, welcome again, Marys, to our Tuesday night Bible study, Hearts in Submission. All right, our mission is to minister to the heart, mind, and soul of the woman, our vision is to encourage healing, deliverance, restoration, personal and spiritual growth through biblical study. That's imperative. Our vision is to encourage healing, deliverance, restoration, personal and spiritual growth through biblical study. And our foundational scripture is Psalms 51 and 10. That is the New King James Version and it reads, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Yes. All right, in our overview for our book, the book that we are studying right now, and that is by Joyce Meyer is the author, Healing the Soul of a Woman. And the overview is the purpose of this particular book, workbook, is to facilitate healing of the soul. And we will need a copy of the study guide and as well as the workbook for us to really do the work because the workbook and the book itself will support us in doing the work. And our objectives is to read the book and working through the study guide will aid in the deliverance and restoration of our souls. So in reading this book and working through the study guide, will aid in healing, deliverance, and restoration of our souls, as well as to overcome emotional wounds by activating God's healing in our lives and to explore and renew our minds to God's word. And no matter what supplemental material we use in his ministry, hearts and submission, it's always going to be about renewing our minds to God's word as he brings healing and restoration to our lives. Well, Marys, I am so excited about this part two, the activities. I pray that those of you who have your books, you actually went through the activity. But if you don't have your book and your workbook, it is okay. You can track with us. You can go along with us tonight in the activity, in the workbook for that uh, God Wants the Wounded, that's that chapter three that we're concluding tonight. And you can then go back, listen to the replays, and then do your work. So it's important, it's imperative, whether you have your books or not, we, we desire that you track with us. Don't allow that to be an excuse for why you don't go back and do the work. And as well, try to work along with us as we go through it. Well, I am Evangelist Keisha, and uh, Minister Sarah, she is not on with us tonight. She has another ministry assignment, but we're going to work through this, Marys. 
It's going to be wonderful. But before we do anything, we definitely have to pray. I mean, that is imperative um, as we are in this part two of God Wants the Wounded, chapter three. Let's just go before the throne of grace and Mary's and give God all that is due him. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We thank you for continuing to wash our minds with the water of your word and with your spirit. Holy Spirit, we acknowledge that you are here with us, that you reside within us, that you are here to equip us for this time of ministry and Bible study so that we can then go out when we are Martha's and do all that you have called us to do. We thank you that it is your will for us to be healed and for us to be made whole. That as we come into the perfect knowledge of your love and desires, heart's desires, to fulfill your purposes in the earth that you have called us to, we are open to receive it, God. And we acknowledge that in and of ourselves, we are unable to heal anyone. We're unable to heal ourselves. But we surrender our lives to you. And we trust you, God, that you will heal every wound and every place that we hurt. In Jesus' name we pray. Mary's amen, amen, and amen. So take off the day. Let's get ourselves prepared for this part two of God Wants to Heal the Wounded. That is chapter three in Healing the Soul of the Woman. And that is going to be on, if you have your workbook, Mary's, that's going to be on page 12. Okay, let's see. Hold on. No. That's going to be on page 10. I was already moving forward. That's going to be on page 10 of the study guide, okay? Chapter three, God wants the wounded. And on last week, Mary's in part one of this, we actually um, did the review of the book because that's kind of the pattern that we're following. We will review the book and then try to get into the uh, study guide and complete the activities if we have time. But if we don't have time, then we then do a part two like we're doing today. So it's going to be important for you if you did not uh, go back and listen to the replay, to go back and listen to the replay so that you can then catch up and it'll bring you up to speed to where we are in the study guide. But I will, Mary's, give you um, a highlight of what we actually touched on last week from the book, okay? Just to kind of share that with you so that it can just kind of refresh our memories on where we are today. Let's see, before we actually get started. And what I gleaned from this, Mary's, is that there is always purpose for our brokenness, okay? And that God wants the wounded. I mean, that's what this chapter is. And so on last week, it was broken down in a way that really uh, Holy Spirit began to re reveal to us what that looks like. God wants the wounded, but he doesn't leave us wounded. He will heal us everywhere we hurt. We must yield all that we hold, that we hold onto and cover and hide because it's tender, painful or shameful to him. We must surrender it to him. We must be willing to be healed as he deems fit. And equally, allow him to use our pain, our battle wounds for his purpose. Yielding all that we are actively turning it over to him and embracing the process. And to think that we are a cracked pot, and we'll get into that with the activity if you weren't on on last week and you did not go back and listen to the replay. I identified uh, myself as a crack pot because I realized that when God wants the wounded, 
it's not about that pretty nice vessel that has no dents, that has no wounds, that has no cracks, no calluses, or no oozes. But he wants those of us that are wounded or that we feel like that we may have been damaged goods. So to think that we are a cracked pot, damaged goods, and nothing good can be produced out of our lives will keep us in bondage and in a broken and depraved state of mind. But if we yield it all, surrender all of the hurts, habits, and hangups to God of heaven, we will see that nothing we went through was for naught. We will begin to see the beauty emerge from the ashes, the light emerge from the darkness, and precious coming out of the vow diamonds formed out of the dirt and pressure and the pressure of the diamond being formed out of the dirt and the pearl produced from the irritant, the dirt within the seashell. That is our portion if we surrender our war wounds to the Trinity. God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So that is, I would say, just in a quick synopsis of what that looked like in the review. I mean, it's so much more, but we don't have time to just go back and get into that. But my prayer is that you got something out of this as we go into this uh, activity in the workbook, in the study guide. And I do have a small straw to share with you if we have time, but I want to definitely go ahead and get into our study guide because I don't want to keep you for too long, okay? So that should have given you time, Marys, to actually get to that page 10 in our study guide. And of course, it says at the top in this chapter three, God wants the wounded. Before you begin, read chapter three in healing the soul of a woman. Well, of course, we know that we have already done that. We did that on last week because this is part two. So we're moving right into in touch with yourself, okay? And so I am going to share my personal intimacy, my intimacy with God and what it is that I got out of this uh, study in the workbook, in the study guide, in this chapter three. And you as well, Marys, you know, uh, use this opportunity to glean and reflect back on what it is that you got out of it if you were able to complete the assignments. So in touch with yourself, that question said, how have you followed through with your plans to begin the healing process? Well, for me, Marys, that's by surrendering my battle wounds, my war wounds, in their entirety. God of heaven, God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the Trinity, I trust you. And that's what I'm saying. This is, this is my engagement. This is my intimacy with him. And I was just saying, God of heaven, Father, Son, and Spirit, I trust you to heal me the way that you deem fit, allowing you to use and use everything within me, all of my war wounds, everything that I have encountered, the sum total of my experiences, my hurts, my habits, and my hangups to help others. So that was my intimacy with him for that question. And the next part of that says, read the opening quote by Brina, Brianna, that's it. I'm sorry, Mears. Brianna Manning, what do you think it means? Okay. Do you think your, your wounds resemble anything Jesus went through while he was on earth? And it said, explain. And I said, yes. And I went back, Mears, and I researched the quote and this is what I found. So let me just give you information on what I found on this particular quote here. Let me find it here. Because I definitely want to share with you what I got.
as well for those of you who do not have your books i'm going to just read to you what it says okay because it's going to be important for you to know what it actually says there and i'm dropping my book from here sorry <laughs> okay let's see and that was at the beginning of the chapter and it says god wants the wounded the unwounded life bears no resemblance to the rabbi. And that was Brianna Manning. And so as I was pondering that in my heart, let me get my book, Mary's. As I was pondering that in my heart, I said, let me just go back and just research what that really looks like. Because we understand that a rabbi is a religious leader. Okay, and of course, those of us that uh, belong to Jesus Christ, we know that we are in a we serve a king, a sovereign king, and we're in a kingdom. But just for the sake of that particular quote, I did want to just be very clear on what I knew that you know a rab a rabbi a represents a religious leader, and also goes all the way back to you know, Moses and the establishment of these particular offices. So this is what I gleaned, and this was posted by WordPress. And it says here, the wounded life bears no resemblance to the rabbi. That was the quote. And then it says, for those who feel their lives are grave or a grave disappointment to God, it requires enormous trust and reckless raging confidence to accept that love of Jesus Christ and to know that there is no shadow of alteration or change. So I was pondering that and I said, okay, that's what that looks like for me. For those who feel their lives are a grave disappointment to God, it requires enormous trust and reckless, raging confidence to accept the love of Jesus Christ and that there is no shadow, and the word says, of turning, and this says alteration or change. And then she went further to say in this article on WordPress, it says, we are broken people. Sometimes our failures feel small and unimportant. Like a child with a scratch, when a Band-Aid can magically heal a made-up flaw. But other times, the cut is so much deeper, and it seems that no amount of surgery could ever mend it. It feels as though our world is literally crashing down around us, and sooner or later, we are confronted with the painful truth of our inadequacy and insufficiency. But it's in these moments that I am reminded the grace that God shows each of his children. Yes, we may miss the mark, but these moments are the very parts of our story that make his love and his grace so great and so tangible that we can't help but to give every part of our being to him. So that's what that felt like to me. So when I identified with that, I identified what was posted there in WordPress. Okay, so then the next question says, take some time, take some time to honestly evaluate how much you want to be healed and what you are doing to seek healing. And then she said, go ahead and then journal your thoughts, okay? And so what I did is in reference to that, I'm just saying to that, and this is what I wrote and I had my own time with the Lord, my personal evaluation into reflection and assessment. That's what I did. I did a personal assessment. I went back to just kind of take a look at what was going on inside of me. What was going on inside of my soul? 
that's really not in alignment with my redeemed spirit. Because Marys, we know that we are some total of, you know, uh, we are spirit and we, we possess a soul which is the sum total of our mind, will, and emotions. Though the, uh, those are the components of the soul, because remember, we're talking about healing the soul of a woman. And we are living in a body. And this body only reflects what's in the soul. And it also reflects what's in our spirit. So what are we feeding more? But if we are in a broken state, and we are manifesting that that is in our soul most oftentimes it's not going to be so lovely and it's not going to feel good so i had to go back with that particular question and just do a personal evaluation inter reflection and assessment okay so then the next question is how open are you to share what you've been through and what you are currently struggling with. And for those Marys that have just joined us, we are actually in the study guide on last week. If you were on last week, we actually did the review of the book and this week we're doing the study guide activities. And I am just sharing exactly what it is that I uh, gleaned from it and how the spirit of the Lord was kind of walking me through this activity in God Wants the Wounded Part 3 in the activities. So I'm sharing my intimacy with you all. And my prayer is that you're taking out time, even from hearing some of the things that I'm sharing, to actually do the work on your side, even if it's just something that you're, you're thinking in your mind or you just jot it down. It doesn't have to be perfect. And remember, your answer is your answer with the Lord. It's not about what I said uh, or my school of thought on it, my theories, or even the author school of thought. And I love the way she has designed this book this time is that we really have to dig deep. We have to go in and really uh, allow the Holy Spirit to uh, speak to our hearts and take us through the transformation and the process. We literally have to do the work, Marys. So let me move on to the next question in the book. I'm on page 11 now. And it says, how open are you to share what you've been through and what you are currently struggling with? Okay. And I said here, as a co-minister, and I, I went back and, and I went back and I reflected on how willing I am to share my struggles, right? And everything that I've been through. So then I began to jot down what that looks like for me. And I said, as a, a co-minister of Bundage Breakers Ministry Global, as a community advocate, that um, I, I'm in the battle, I'm in the fight to eradicate the uh, sexual exploitation of our children through sex trafficking. Uh, so I'm a community advocate there. Um, as a facilitator of his ministry, right where I am, doing that right now, as I share with you all, I'm willing and open to share. And as a large part of my message and my ministry is definitely a reflection of my battle room. So that's what, you know, I put there and as well, being a deliverance minister, a healing and deliverance minister, that speaks to, you know, uh, my life. It's, that's my message. That's my ministry. It will give you a glimpse or a snapshot as to really the things that I've gone through and who I am and, and what God has called me to. And that's what you needed to do in that section is to reflect on that, that God is using you to do or what you will be willing to allow him to use those things in your life that have not felt so good to be a blessing to others. And then I didn't make mention of being a marriage mentor. A marriage mentor. Prophet Atoy and I have been married for 24 years, but we've been in covenant. We've been in covenant marriage for 24 years, but we've been together for 32 years. So doing the math, that tells you that we weren't in covenant marriage when we married, okay? So there were some things there. 
that needed to be dealt with, that, that was not aligned with the will of God. So that was also a place that I had to say, is that a place that I am willing to share? Absolutely, because Prophet Latoya and I are marriage mentors. So that's another place. So you just go back, you know, and just reflect on that and see what it, what is it that I'm willing to share? Am I willing to turn it all over to the Lord? And I know that as we go through this, there's still things in me that God is showing me. All right. And so the next question is, and actually she just, she just spoke to something that's in the book. It's a paragraph here. And I actually highlighted and italicized what I'm going to read this first sentence. And it says, God deliberately chooses those who have been wounded to work in his kingdom army. He deliberately does that. And then it, she went further to say, he works through their wounds and weaknesses and people see his power. When people in the world think they are strong and have all the qualifications they need, but they are not leaning and relying on God, he often has to pass them over and instead choose someone who is less qualified from a worldly perspective. But it but is entirely dependent upon him in all areas of their lives. As you put your trust in God, the day may come when even the people who hurt you will witness the mighty things that God has done in your life and through you as his instrument. And then she went further to say, what do you think the statement being experienced is a benefit? But getting the experience is painful means. But before I move on to that, I just want to speak to God deliberately chooses who have, who have been wounded to work in his kingdom, his, his kingdom army. And I believe that to be so. I believe that to be true, that the process that I have gone through in just speaking to and making reference to the things that I'm doing in the kingdom. I wasn't pre-qualified for these things. He called me and then he qualified me. So Mary's, if you are thinking, you know, and if you maybe have pondered this in your heart and in your mind to say, well, God, how do I then, you know, gain the experience or the credentials needed to do these things in ministry? Mary's, he calls those, he qualifies those that he calls. He qualifies those that he calls. And he doesn't most often time call, times call the qualified. Because why? God wants the wounded. The sum total of our life experiences, our hurts, our habits, our hangups, he then transforms us, he redeems us, he delivers us, and then he uses it for his glory. He brings the precious out of the Bible in our lives, okay? So that's, you know, something that I wanted to share with you, and that's why I then, you know, I italicized and I highlighted God deliberately chooses those whom have been wounded to work in his kingdom army. And I know that and I believe that to be so because everything that I mentioned to you about what I do, even sitting here as a facilitator, a facilitator of his ministry, hearts in submission. This is about healing, you know, bringing healing and restoration to the hearts, minds and souls of the woman, bringing us into that place of wholeness. That is, you know, what I do. And as I'm going through this process and sitting at the feet of Jesus with you, Marys, this is a part of the process for me. As I am being healed, he is using me in these areas. Even, you know, Bundes Breakers Ministry Global, which is our ministry, you know, that I've been called to, you know, that was something that I wasn't qualified for, that I wasn't pre-qualified. He took all of my mess and it became my message and he took it and then it became my ministry, the misery that I experienced. 
became a part of my ministry. And he's doing it even now. The, you know, going out and being an advocate for our children, those that are being exploited, you know, in the fight to eradicate, you know, sexual exploitation, the commercial sexual exploitation of our children and individuals as a whole, the most vulnerable among us. That's a part of my ministry. So that would tell you something that gives you an eyes view, it gives you an idea that there's something that I went through that wasn't so lovely. Now that I have that burden in that area, and even I made mention to you about being a marriage mentor and Prophet Toy and I being in covenant marriage now for 24 years, but we were together for 32. That told you in itself that as a marriage mentor, there was something that we needed to share that God has used to bring the precious out of the vow, even as he brought us together as one in covenant marriage. And we had to then die to our flesh because when we came together, we came together with from our flesh realm, from our lower dark nature. We didn't come together from our redeemed spirits because I, I was a child of God and Prophet Toy was as well but we were still living our lives from our Lord dark nature. And as God continued to deliver us and bring us into a place of wholeness in that area after covenant marriage, then he, God then is using, making use of everything that we've gone to to come into this place of wholeness as marriage mentors. So that's what that looks like when it says God deliberately chooses those who have been wounded to work in his kingdom for me. Okay, and so then now let's move on to that next question that says, what do you think the statement being experienced is a benefit, but getting the experience is painful means? And I said to that, it's not easy to sojourn through the pain of our life experiences. They become a benefit though to those who we are called to, to help and to help them come into a place of healing and restoration. And I also made reference to Revelations 12 and 11 that says, we overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimonies in our mouths. If that's all we can do is share with somebody what we've been through and how God has restored us, how he's redeemed us and how he's healed us in our process of healing. Even the fact that we have not fully arrived, that even marries, right? Yeah, okay. So that's that part for me. And then right under that, then she then read the scriptural reference from John uh, 3 and 18, but she said this, she said, instead of thinking about how much you have gone through in life that has been painful, why not think about all the experience that you now have and all the opportunities that are before you as God's daughter? Remember, with God, there is no rejects. That's why Jesus said, he who believes in him, who clings to, trusts in, relies on him, is not judged. He who trusts in him never comes up for judgment. For him, there is no rejection, no condemnation. He incurs no damnation. And that is John 3, 18. And so now moving on to the next page, Mary's. Let me make sure I didn't put any side notes there. No, I didn't. Okay, moving on to the next page, and that's going to be page 12 of the study guide. And this is said, this is explore God's word. And this is where we get into the word and we, be, we began to read from his word that he says here. And it says, read Hebrews 5, 8 through 9 from several translations and then write it in your own words. And let me share Mary's what I have with you. All right, 
And these are the translations that I chose, Hebrews 5, 8 through 9. I chose the King James Version first. And it says, though he were a son, yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered. And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. And the, the second translation that I chose, of course, you all know, one of my favorite translations is the Amplified Version. Okay, and it reads, although he was a son who had never been disobedient to the father, he learned active, special obedience through what he suffered. And having been made perfect, uniquely equipped and prepared as savior and retaining his integrity amid opposition, he became the source of eternal salvation and eternal inheritance to all those who obey him. And the, the last, the third translation that I chose, Mary's, is Hebrews, uh, it's Hebrews 5 through 8, and this is the Passion Translation. And it reads, that even though he was a wonderful son, he learned to listen and obey through all his sufferings. And after being proven perfect in this way, he has now become the source of eternal salvation to all those who listen to him and obey. All right, now she said for us Marys to write this in our own words, okay? And so my words, Marys, my words, I will take heed to the blueprint, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the son of God, the son of God of heaven set before me. Just as he did, I will learn, listen and obey, allowing the suffering in my life to produce righteousness and holiness. I will lead a life that is pleasing to God that can be used as an example for others because of what Jesus Christ did on the cross of Calvary to redeem us. So that was my words. And so Marys, I suggest if you have not, go back, ponder that scripture and see what he says to you and write that, rewrite that in your own words. All right, Marys. And so now below that, then she then spoke to in the, the study guide, she said, these two, th these two scriptural verses, which is at Hebrews uh, 5, 8 through 9, 8 and 9, she said, these two scriptural verses speaks volumes to me, not only about Jesus, but about my own life. Jesus needed experience in order to be our high priest so he could truly say that he understands our pain. My experience with Jesus' healing power qualified me to boldly tell others that Jesus would heal their wounded souls just as he had mine. Jesus suffered. He gained experience. And it equipped it equipped him for what his father wanted to do. Paul wrote, and I actually underlined, highlighted this part of it. Paul wrote that we have a high priest who is able to understand and sympathize and have a shared feeling with our weaknesses. Because he has gone through the things we go through now according to Hebrews 4 and 15. And she went further to say, I am amazed each time I read and contemplate these scriptures and they give me hope that what I have been through will be used to help other people. She said, think about what it means to offer your experience to God for his use. Think about that. And you can go back again, Marys, and just ponder some of the things I shared with you. The things that I'm doing in ministry. 
Because again, it's a sum total of the things that I've gone through, my hurts, my habits, my hangups. Don't those things that I have been delivered from have now become a part of my message as well as a part of my ministry. So he said, think about what it means to offer your experience to God for his use. And then she said, write a prayer asking God to use you. Be open to hearing what God has to say. So now let me share with you, Mary's, my prayer. This is my prayer. Father, Son, and Spirit, Holy Trinity, I come to you in the humblest way I know how with my whole heart, with my life, my entire being, spirit, soul, and body, withholding nothing. I surrender my life to you. I yield my members to you, and I sincerely ask that you would use me as you deem fit. All of me. All of me. I want my life from this day forward to be used for your good pleasure. I desire to fulfill the purposes and plans you have for me according to your word in Jeremiah 29 and 11. No short odds. Forgive me, Jesus, for the times I held back knowingly and unknowingly. Father, Son, and Spirit, have your way. Your will be done in me, to me, and through me. In Jesus Christ of Nazareth, name I pray. Amen, amen, and amen. All right, Mary, so that is my prayer. I'll just leave that up there just for a moment, just so that you can look at that and give you an opportunity just for a few seconds to go ahead and start jotting down and start writing your prayer if you have not. I want to give you just a few seconds to do that, Mary. All right, Marys. Now, this may not have given you a lot of time, but at least you can then begin to open up your heart to the Lord. So if you did not write your prayer, at least you kind of have an idea of what that looks like. And then you begin to open up and allow the Holy Spirit to download to you what that looks like for you. Okay? Now, and I'll still just kind of leave it up there for you to see it as I go to this next question. And it says, what does it mean that God takes the broken pieces of our lives and makes beautiful things? What does that mean to you, Marys? Well, for me, I said, pretty much what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the illustration. And what that means to me, and I spoke to this on last week about the cracked pot, okay? So I'm going to show you that illustration. But as he said in his word, he will take the precious out of the vial, the vial uh, according to Jeremiah 15 and 19 and Thessalonians 5.23. And I'm going to just read that to you, Marys, because that kind of speaks to how I feel about God taking the broken pieces of our lives and making beautiful things. And then I'm going to share with you my activity, but that's with the next question. So Jeremiah 15 and 19, let me read that for you. And that reads, and I'm reading from the Amplified Version, Marys, and that reads, therefore, thus says the Lord to Jeremiah, if you repent and give up this must this must mistaken attitude 
of despair and self-pity, then I will restore you to a state of inner peace so that you may stand before me as my obedient representative. And if you separate the precious from the worthless, and that would be the vile, examining yourself and cleansing your heart from unwarranted doubt concerning my faithfulness, you will become my spokesman. Let the people turn to you and learn to value my values. But you, you must not turn to them with regard to their idolatry and wickedness. Right? That's what I feel about that, about him taking uh, the broken pieces of my life and making beautiful things. And then in uh, 1 Thessalonians 5 and 23, as well as in the Amplified Version. And here's the thing, Mary, about this, okay? I use the word of God because that's how he communes with me. Because the spirit of the Lord dwells richly within us. And this logos word becomes a rhema word. It becomes a right now word. And you know that then the things that you are praying, the things that you're saying are aligning with the will of God for your life. When you can then go and reference scripture, our Holy Spirit then brings a scripture to mind to tell you this is how you relate to this. And then out of that comes your theory or your school of thought. But it's in alignment with the will and the word of God. Okay, in that 1 Thessalonians 5 and 23, and that's the Amplified Version, and it reads, Now, may the God of peace himself sanctify you through and through, that is, separate you from profane and vulgar things, make you pure and whole and undamaged, consecrated to him, set apart for his purpose, and may your spirit and soul and body be kept complete and be found blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Right? That's how I see my life when I see God taking the broken pieces and making beautiful things. And now let me illustrate to you what that looks like from the activity because on the next page on page 13 it says enter it says either draw a picture or find a picture that illustrates this concept keep it in a place you will see often and remember i made reference to this on last week about the the, the cracked pot so let me just share this with you now Mary's. either draw a picture or find a picture that illustrates this concept. Keep it in a place that you will see often. Okay, now for me, here's the picture. This is the picture of the cracked pot and there's the parable of the cracked pot. And I'll just kind of share a bit about this cracked pot, the story of it, beauty in our flaws, right? And um, this was something, Mary's, that I actually gleaned from in 2017, June 4th, 2017 at 10 p.m. at night. So this tells you how long the Lord has been really working on me and dealing with me. And when I went back and I started to do my research, I pulled this up. This came up in my notes and I thought that this was ideal to share with you. So this would be my picture. And even while I am reading this to you, take this time, Marys, to even begin to think about what that looks like for you. It looks like the cracked pot, the parable of the cracked pot for me. But what does that look like for you? Because she said, I have a draw a picture or find a picture that illustrates this concept. Okay. And what is the concept? That was what we talked about. What does it mean for God to take the broken pieces of our lives to make beautiful things? This is what that looks like for me. I gave you scriptural reference that he gave me. Now I'm giving you the illustration through my picture and through this parable of the cracked pot. Beauty in our flaws, page 
parable of the cracked pot. And for those of you on the phone, be sure to go back and watch the replay so that you can as well as engage in the activities and see exactly what it is that I actually illustrated here regarding that, okay? So the cracked pot, and as I said, this was something that the Lord gave me back in 2017 at 10 p.m. at night. And I just thought it was ideal for today. Okay, it says a water bearer in, Indian had, in India had two large pots. Each hung, hung each on each of a pole, which he carried across his neck. One of the pots had a crack in it. And while the other pot was perfect and always delivered a full portion of water at the end of the long walk from the stream to the master's house, the cracked pot arrived only half full. For a full two years, this went on daily. With the bearer delivering only one and one half of the water in his master's house. The perfect pot was proud of its accomplishments, perfect to the end for which it was made. But the poor cracked pot was ashamed of its own imperfection and miserable that it was able to accomplish only half of what it had been made to do. After two years of what it perceived to be a bitter failure, it spoke to the water bearer one day by the stream. I am ashamed of myself and I want to apologize to you. Why? asked the bearer. What are you ashamed of? I have been able to, for these past two years, to deliver only half of my load because of this crack in my side causes water to leak out of all out all the way back to your master's house. Because of my flaws, you have to do all of this work and you don't get full value from your efforts, the pot said. The water bearer felt sorry for the old cracked pot. And in his compassion, he said, as we return to the master's house, I want you to notice the beautiful flowers along the path. Indeed, as they went up the hill, the old cracked pot took notice of the sun warming the beautiful wild flowers on the side of the path. And as he, as this cheered it some, but at the end of the trail, it still felt bad because it had leaked out half its load. And so again, it apologized to the bearer for its failure. The bearer said to the pot, did you notice that there were flowers only on your side of the path, but not on the on the side of the other pots? That's because I have always known about your flaw. And I pause there, Mary's. Because I have always known about your flaw. And I took advantage of it. I planted flower seeds on your side of the path. And every day while we walk back from the stream, you've watered them. For two years, I have been able to pick these beautiful flowers to decorate my master's table. Without you being just the way you are, he would not have this, he would not have this beauty to grace his house. And at the end of this, it says each of us has our own unique flaws. We are all cracked pots, as it were. But if we will allow it, the Lord will use our flaws to grace his father's table. In God's great economy, nothing goes to waste. So as we seek ways to minister together, 
And as God calls you to task, he has, appoint, he has appointed for you. Don't be afraid of your flaws. Acknowledge them and allow him to take advantage of them. And you too can be the cause of beauty in his pathways. God, I said God, but it said, go out boldly, knowing that in our weakness, we find his strength and, and in him, every one of God's promises is yay, is yes, is amen. All right, Mary, so that's what I wanna share with you, something that I've been holding on to since June 4th, 2017 at 10, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So that tells you right there that that really meant something to me. And it actually really transformed how I felt about my battle scars and my battle uh, wounds, you know? All right. Now, let me share with you Mary's. The highlight for me from this today is God is in the business of fixing damaged people. And when you go back and watch this marriage, for those of you on the phone, you'll see the little, uh, the little water jar and the little flower with my little face on the inside of it. <laughs> So that is my illustration for you. And my highlight for this today is God is in the business of fixing damaged people. I believed I was damaged goods at one point in time in my life. And it came and I came to realize that even if I was in man's eyes, God had a plan for me just like a cracked pot. He would and he has and is using me to water the lives, the souls of those in the vineyard he has called me to. Therefore, nothing I've gone through is for nothing. Therefore, my life is being poured out just the way he desires and he's repairing me in the process. All right, Mary, so that is my illustration. So my prayer is that even in the midst of this, while I've been talking, you had an opportunity to go in and then either draw your picture or get you know, an image in your mind of what that looks like for you, okay? And then next it says here in the book, Elizabeth Elliot said, of one thing I am sure, and I actually highlighted and underlined this, Mary's. Elizabeth, Elizabeth Elliot said, of one thing I am sure, God's story never ends with ashes. And I paused there. I paused there. And then she went further to say, that statement touches me deeply and gives me hope. We may begin with ashes, but when we give them to Jesus, he makes something beautiful. Don't let your pain be wasted by being bitter and resentful throughout life because you feel that you have been unjustly treated. Instead, make your experiences a valuable tool for helping others. And then she went further and she said, read Isaiah 41, 15 through 17 out loud several times. What does these verses reveal about how God wants to use you as his instrument? Okay, and I'm going to read that, but hopefully you have read this out loud. And if you haven't, I'm giving you the scriptural reference, uh, Mary. It's Isaiah 41, 15 through 17, for those of you who don't have a book. So I'm just gonna read it one time out loud, but you go back and read it again, okay? Read it for the, she said several times out loud. Okay, Isaiah 41, 15 through 17 in the Amplified Version, it says, in fact, 
I have made of you a new sharp threshing implement, a tool with sharp edges. You will thresh the mountains and crush them and make the hills like chaff. You will win now them and the wind will carry them away and a high wind will scatter them, but you will rejoice in the Lord. You will glory in the Holy One of Israel. The poor and needy are seeking water, but there is none. Their tongues are parched with thirst. I, the Lord, will answer them myself. I, the God of Israel, will not neglect them. And so she said, read that out loud several times. What does the verses reveal about how God wants to use you as his instrument? Now, for me, what I said, he wants to use me as an instrument, a tool. He will use me as to destroy yokes and bondages from the lives of those that he has called me to or that he has called to my life. To his people. And as well, he will use me as a vessel to quench them, to quench their thirst through his word. So that's what I shared on that, Mary's, that he will use me as a tool, okay? He will use me as a tool to destroy yokes and bondages from the lives of those people that he has uh, assigned me to. As well, he will use me as a vessel to quench the thirst through his word. All right. And so then the next question says, do you believe there is nothing that has hurt you that God can't heal or restore you or restore in your life? So let me read that again. Do you believe there is nothing that has hurt you that God can't heal or restore in your life? Why or why not? So for me, I said, there's nothing, there's nothing that he can't heal because first of all, he's God. And I stand on that. There, there's, you know, I have no shadow. There's no doubt. Anything that comes out of me that would reject that is within me, not because he's not a perfect God. And I pause there. Not because he can't do it not because he's not willing and not because he's not doing it now. But if there's a doubt in my mind or a mind binding spirit that will tell me something different, that's my stuff, not his. So there's nothing that he can't heal. And that's what I wrote, Mary's. There's nothing that he can't heal because he's God. I've seen his hand working in my life, restoring and healing me and others. And I believe he will complete the work he started in me, according to Philippians 1 and 6. Now go back and read that, Philippians 1 and 6, Mary's. And matter of fact, let me see if I actually have it here. If I don't have it here, actually I do, yes. <laughs> Philippians 1 and 6, Amplified Version. And it reads, I am convinced and confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will continue to perfect and complete it until the day of Christ Jesus, the time of his return. Full stop, Marys. So nothing to be added to that, right? Yeah, okay. All right, so the next question says, Use the lines below to thank God that there is nothing you cannot recover from and nothing that God cannot heal. And so what I did, Mary, is I just looked at this. I, de I declared it and I decreed it. I declared it and I decreed it. And I said, Father God, I thank you that there is nothing that I cannot recover from and nothing you cannot heal. Father God, I decree it and I declare it. I thank you that there is nothing that I cannot recover from and nothing you cannot heal. 
All right, now let's go to the last page, page 14, Marys. And after we finish this, then I am going to uh, pause the video so that if you have any questions, any concerns, any burning desires, or anything that you would like to share off record, you'll be able to do that, okay? All right. So, it says here on page 14, this next question says, how does it feel to know that you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit kept safe by God. And I said, a sense of peace, confidence, and resolve. All right, and then below that she said, you are set apart, sanctified for God's use. And that includes any and everything that you have gone through that was painful or damaging. I urge you to release all of your past pain and wounds to the Holy Spirit and ask him to begin his restoration project in your life. Don't waste your pain. Let God work it out for your good, okay? And so then we move into, and that was exploring God's word. So you see exploring God's word, is, there's a lot of scriptural reference there and there should be things bubbling up in your heart. And when he does, he gives you a passage of scripture, go back, Pull that out and then write it, decree it, and declare it. Okay, Marys? Okay, now we're moving into the very last part of this, and that is healing in action. And it says here, what ways do you envision God using your pain to heal others? Well, Marys, if you didn't do that part of the activity, I actually shared that with you when I said, um, He's using me through our ministry, Bondage Breakers Ministry Global. He's using me as a community advocate for Street Grace to eradicate the uh, commercial sexual exploitation of our children. He's using me as a healing and deliverance minister. He's using me as a marriage mentor. He's using me as a facilitator of his ministry, bringing healing to the the hearts, minds, and souls of the woman through biblical study, through Bible study. So he's using me in those ways. So what ways is he using you or do you see that healing? Because this is healing in action. And here's the deal. I made mention of those things that I'm doing, but remember, I'm still a work in progress. It's a process. But I have surrendered all to him. And even that, that I didn't know that he peels back. And he then begins to show me now, I'm saying to him, God, use it for your glory. That my flesh, that it would die. So that you can then show me. And I would then be willing to allow your glory to come into my life and you're, you're trained to fill my temple to be able to minister to your people and use everything that's in me that's been wounded. And I know it's a part of your plan for my life. So Marys, what ways do you envision God using your pain to help others? All right? And then the last part of that said, what is one way you can let God use your pain for your good? or to help others this week? What way? And I said, by being open to any assignment he gives me and to be willing to share my testimony as the opportunity arises. So even when I wake up in the mornings, Mary's in Prophet Toy and I pray and we have our devotional. That's the first thing that we do is we say, Father, we are checking in for duty because we realize that we're on assignment and we say, Lord, have your way in our lives today. If you allowed us to open up our eyes today and we have breath in our bodies, we are reporting for duty. Have your way in our lives. And that might sometimes look like Mary's as an evangelist. This is the part that you don't see on his that you don't see if you follow us on Bundance Breakers Ministry Global. You don't see me passing out tracks, but I do that. As God allows the opportunity, 
I am ministering and I'm passing out tracts that minister the word of God to people. And I then give them something inside of that tract that lets them know that God is not just saying, I love you and you know, I'm your savior and I'm your, your redeemer, but I'm saying he is the answer. And then I provide something for them inside of that tract that they were actually standing there with their sign looking for. And that could look like money. That could look like food because people want to see God's love manifested through us and we are his hands and his feet in the earth. So that is in essence, God using us to do his bidding in the earth. What does that look like? Being on with you all and being transparent with you, allowing you to see into me, into me see, sharing this with you going through the process with you, sitting at the feet of Jesus with you. That's what that looks like. His healing in action in my life, even as I facilitate and pour out. Okay, Mary, so that's what that looks like. And we have come to the end um, of that. And I am going to pause it in just a moment. I do want to uh, share something with you that I did not share at the beginning. And let me see if, if I can find it. Let's see. Um, that I thought was important, you know, as we, you know, kind of covered it and highlighted last week, God wants the wounded. And even in my research, um, I looked up wounded in action because, you know, we talked about healing in action in this last part of it, being wounded in action. And that's W-I-A. And, and that actually describes, that describes uh, individuals who have been wounded while fighting in combat, in a combat zone during wartime, but have not been killed. So listen, if it doesn't kill us, Mary's, it can only make us better. Oh my God. If it doesn't kill us, Mary's, if it don't take us out, it can only make us better. And then it said further, and this was an article that I found um, online, and it says, typically, it implies that they are temporarily, permanently incapable of bearing arms. This is individuals that were in combat, uh, combatants, okay? It says, typically, it implies that they are temporarily are permanently incapable of bearing arms or continuing to fight. Generally, the wounded in action, WIA, are far more numerous than those killed. Common combat injures, injuries include second and third degree burns, broken bones, brain injuries, spinal cord injuries, nerve damage, paralysis, loss of sight and hearing, post-traumatic stress syndrome, and limb loss. For the U.S. military, becoming WIA in combat generally results in subsequent conferral of the Purple Heart because the purpose of the medal itself, one of the highest awards military or civilian officially given by the American government, is to recognize those killed incapacitated or wounded in battle. And I associate that, Mary's, not with receiving the purple heart from men, but when it's all said and done, that Father God will say to us, he will say to me, well done, my good and faithful servant. And then even as I bow my head, I will receive my crown. So I look at that from a spiritual perspective and everything that I made mention of the things that, that, that the wounding that these individuals receive in actual combat are the, some of the same type of spiritual wounding that we receive when we're born into this earth. When we are birthed into this earth, Mary's, the battle is on. Nevertheless, at the end of it, where those who, who go through physical WIA and we're going through spiritual WIA, they receive a Purple Heart, a medal, 
for their country that they fought for. But we will receive our crown that says, well done, my good and faithful warrior in the army of the Lord. My battle axe, my kindle fire, that that God calls you while in service in the kingdom. So I wanted to share that with you, Mary. And so now what we're going to do is go ahead and pause it because we have come to the end of that because I know uh, some of you, you may have to get off and we want to make sure that you have that opportunity to actually share. So let me just pause the recording. Minister Sarah, welcome. Welcome, greetings, greetings. I, I see I actually logged in with the wrong ID here. <laughs> But I am so glad to be able to join you all, Mary, tonight. Um, let's go ahead, if you can, and mute everyone, please. Thank you. And what such a timely chapter to still be in. I pray that you were blessed with God wants the wounded. And it's just so timely because even what I just got doing dealt with heart wounds, the wounded heart. <laughs> and so it's amazing how God does want the wounded, that he doesn't look for anyone who's perfect. And because he sent his son, Jesus, who was made perfect. And so when we are wounded, when we allow him to come in and heal us and use us as part of the journey, it makes us appreciate that journey even that much more. It's almost as if, you know, um, people don't appreciate things that they just get so quickly and that they don't have to work for or they didn't have to fight for. And so when you know that it cost you something, that it took something to get through, to survive, to heal, to push through, it make you hang on to that that much more. You're that much more grateful. And it makes God really real in your life to know that, yes, he can use you in the midst of that. He can use you even as you continue to go through this healing because you are an example and an ambassador for him. Others will see your journey. They'll see your crack pot and know that they too can be healed and sealed in the blood of Jesus. And so as you all have been listening to everything that Evangelist has spoken to you this night, and I pray that the Holy Spirit has begun to bring some things to the forefront of not only your mind, but your heart, that he will continue to stir it up, that maybe you're in a place where you need to rededicate your life because you've just been doing church as usual, just Christianity as usual as what's going on today. You're just saying it in word, but you really doesn't, you really don't have that relationship there. Or maybe you thought you had a relationship, but you never really had a true conversion, or you're just coming into this and you're listening. We want to let you know that it's never too late to rededicate your life or to give your life to Christ. In a world where you have so many choices nowadays, where everybody is shopping for a different Christianity or uh, a faith in a different God, they're all looking at hybrids, they're all looking at different gods, but we serve the true and living God. There is only one way to be saved, and that is through his son, Jesus Christ. All those other gods are dead. And so God doesn't have to compete with them. So that's why he gives you a choice to decide. And so if you have made a decision and God has been knocking at your door, starting to prick away, chip away at that stone, that heart and heart, heart and soften it. And you have begun to say, Lord, I do want to see what it's like to have you. I do want to get to know your son, Jesus. I hear what they're saying. And I, I want that too. I want to know what it feels like to be healed, to be in your hands. Well, you can take that opportunity now and ask Jesus to forgive you. Forgive you for your sins. Forgive you of your trespasses. You're repenting. You believe that Jesus is the Son of God. And so we're going to say a simple prayer. But it doesn't stop there, Mary. That is just the beginning. You can repeat after me. You can stop it and pause it. But Father, I know that I have sinned. 
I believe that Jesus paid the price for my sins with his blood on the cross. I ask you, Jesus, to forgive and cleanse me of my sin and to be the Lord of my life. Empower and fill me with your Holy Spirit that I might lead a life pleasing to you. Thank you, Lord, for saving me and making me a member of the family of God. In Jesus' name, amen. That still applies to you, Marys, that have rededicated your life. You simply say, Lord, I rededicate my life. And you begin to confess the areas that you need him to give you forgiveness and repentance. And begin from this day forward, cultivating a relationship with him. What does that look like? If you need resources, we'll be glad to steer you to some resources, prayer partner, deliverance, discipleship, starting that relationship with Christ, knowing why he is the true and living God, what makes him different from everything else. So if you made that decision today, congratulations. Now, let us grab your hand and let's go to the next step in Jesus' name. Because deliverance and inner healing is the children's bread. My sister said all the time, we don't do exorcisms. We just partner with the Holy Spirit for that inner healing and that deliverance. And not only is it for you, but it's for everyone who you're going to come in contact with that God will use you for. And most importantly, it points it all back to the true and living God. So Mary's, like we said, if you need any additional resources, feel free to reach out to us at his ministry only at Gmail. We'll be glad to provide that for you. Um, Evangelist, did you want me to close out in prayer or did you want to close out in prayer? You might've had something. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> all right. All right, Marys, let's bring our hearts and minds in. Heavenly Father, we just thank you. We bless you. We glorify you. We thank you for the word that went forth tonight. We thank you, Father, that even as they get off, that you will continue speaking to them, God, that they do not have itchy ears, but that this word will take root and begin to grow and develop. I thank you, Father, that they are being transparent as they are going through each of these lessons, as they are going through the questions, God, that they are being transparent. You are bringing new revelation. You are beginning the healing. We thank you, Father, that you are putting things to the forefront that needs to be dealt with. We thank you, Father, for giving them the courage to continue to take it step by step. We thank you, Father, that they are fearfully and wonderfully made cracks and imperfection and flaws in all, because you said we are perfect in your sight and that we are made in the image of you. So God, I ask that you perfect those things that concern them. Give them the mind of Christ. Strengthen them in those areas that need to be fortified. We apply the blood of Jesus on their minds, their bodies, their finances, their emotions, their families, in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father, that they will hunger and thirst and seek after you, God, that no more they will be okay with the status quo, but God, that they will keep their eyes on you. So Lord, we thank you for doing a new thing. We thank you for the healings that are going forward. We thank you for the testimonies. God, give them blessed rest, cover them throughout their week. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. And Mary's, we will see you next week um, when we're going into chapter four. And I don't have that book in front of me, but you all know what the chapter four is. <laughs> we will see you next week for chapter four. Please take time. Go through those chapters. Highlight. Make notes. Allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you. Even as we're doing it together, what is he saying to you in your quiet time? Just take your time out because he's speaking and he's really speaking in this time, in this season of our lives. Do not silence him during this time. Take time to quiet yourself. Be still. And if you're getting distractions, you got to begin to pray about that because the enemy wants to keep you from going to your next step in healing. So we are out. We love you. We'll see you next week. 
And Maris, for those of you um, that would like to hang on, hang on, and stay in the room, <laughs> and uh, Minister Sarah and I will make ourselves available to you, okay? You can hang on. And next week's uh, chapter four is what is a healthy soul? What is a healthy soul? All right, there it is. Yay. Okay, we'll see you on next Tuesday. And those of you who would like to hang around, you have something else for us, hang around. Love you. Hugs, hugs, hugs. All right, Mary's. <laughs>